Hello again, it's Alex from Bareface continuing Sound for Musicians and we've talked about how sound is transmitted and how sound is a wave and how sound is affected by refraction, diffraction, reflection and superposition and interference and now we're going to have a quick look at musical instruments just briefly dip into what we call stationary vibration in sounding bodies so here we have some very high quality diagrams the sort of thing Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci would have been doing in the Renaissance explaining how musical instruments, sounding bodies generate sound. Now there are many elements to this but what I want to specifically look at is how sound waves don't actually have to be going anywhere to work. Right? This may seem a bit odd but I shall grab a guitar this is an illustration of a guitar. So we have a fulcrum here and here, witness point. This is our string and then this is our solidity that they are affixed to. Now in the case of a guitar, they're not affixed to true solidity, but nothing ever is. Nothing is ever truly solid, but we've got the uh, bridge saddles. This was our, this isn't the bin guitar. This is the car boot sale guitar. There we are. Another witness point there. So nut, bridge, string. Is that flat? Have I got perfect pitch? I don't think so, but it still sounds flat. Anyway, guitar. And think about what's happening. We've talked about sound waves moving, but when we pluck this, this moves. And this actually is a, a transverse wave, which is then generating the longitudinal waves that are the sound wave, but actually, when we pluck this, we set this moving, and this sends a wave up to the saddle, and down to the nut, and then they reflect and come back and forth. And what happens is you end up with what is called stationary vibration. So this is where a string is vibrating in all these numerous modes, and they all overlay and keep passing each other and crossing each other. And this is how musical instruments make sound. So we have this, so you can see the wave is traveling, travels up and then back and up and back and they keep crossing over and passing. And although I shall, this is our fundamental, yeah, we will also have the first overtone, the second harmonic. We will also have the second overtone which is the third harmonic and then it, they keep going until you end up with these you know crazy tiny ones but they're all there they all happen and they all composite together to make the sound of the instrument so that people get really hung up particularly bass guitars really bad for this people going oh, I need 41 hertz my low E uh, or I need 31 hertz my low B but your low E is made out of 41 hertz and 82 hertz and 123 hertz, and 164 hertz, and these are all the overtones, and those overtones go up way high. I mean, in a bass like, say, uh, well, this one's got Q tuners, these go crazy high, these probably go to like 10 kilohertz. The low inductance pick up on a Stingray likewise. Oh, this is a, even a jazz bass goes high, even a P bass with flats will produce output up high, and then we've got this baritone that's got, you know, these, this, these strings may be tuned low, the notes may be, notes may be low, but there's, there's a lot of overtones that generate your sound. So those overtones are formed of these standing waves that travel up and down the string, reflect, pass each other, and that's the thing, they can pass each other. They, they don't block each other, they interfere, but not in a, even if it's a destructive interference in that they completely cancel, they only cancel for that moment where, when they are of equal amplitude and opposite phase. And then as soon as the phase diverges from being 180 degrees out, or the amplitude diverges from being exactly the same, then full cancellation goes away again, and they create sound again. So yes, the sound wave passes through zero, but then it comes and keeps moving. And this is from these stationary vibrations. And you get the same in what we can see is an excellent drawing of a wind instrument. So we've got the mouthpiece here. I say wind instrument, brass instrument, mouthpiece here, and then you have a, a standing wave. And one of the oddities of these wind instruments, yes, you might seem like there's just an opening there, but actually the, the wave sees that 
and actually you end up with this waveform. So if this is seen by the air as a closed end and this is seen as an open end, you actually end up with this wave. So hang on, that should be a maximum and then this would continue. I'm going to have to draw across here. But you end up with a quarter of the wavelength fitting there as the first harmonic and then you won't, if that is an open end, I don't think you then get the second harmonic. I don't, you don't on a clarinet, it does depend on the shape of the horn, but if this is conical, like a, if we draw, draw ourselves a clarinet, which is kind of a conical horn, we definitely get the quarter wave, and then we don't get the half wave, but we get the, oh, like that, whatever that is. So that's the, get the first harmonic, then the third harmonic, then the fifth, that's the distinctive sound of a clarinet. So again, that air column is set into stationary vibration and the same happens with a recorder or an organ pipe. It's just the wave is generated in a different point and then I think again that is, that is seen as a, they've both seen as closed ends. But the point is, we'll be going into the details of how musical instruments actually work. But what we're looking at is stationary vibration. So although the wave isn't going anywhere, and although it may be a transverse vibration in the string, which then generates the longitudinal vibrations of sound in the air, it still behaves the same way. And the, the sounds aren't going anywhere, but they are resonating and vibrating within a point, though I should say, when I say resonating, we're not dealing with that yet either. We're going to pretend that these are things that have no resonant characteristics and they are just perfect instruments, which of course, perfect sounds imperfect, but that's for another time. Stationary vibration in sounding bodies being musical instruments. Done, see you next time.